welcome to Michelle Sews again. I'm Michelle. Today I'm going to take you on a quick walkthrough of my new sewing room in my new apartment. Um, and I hope that you find that interesting. If that sounds good to you, then stay tuned. Okay, so I am going to take you on a quick tour um, of my sewing room. I just want to let you know I've set it up so that it's very functional and it's not my dream sew room but i know that i'm very fortunate that we were able to get a three bedroom apartment so that i could have a dedicated sewing space and I, as i've mentioned before if you follow me then you know that we're only going to be in this apartment for a year so i'm not investing a lot of time and effort into making it my dream sewing room but I do have it set up in a way that's super functional. It works really well for me. And you know, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, it definitely, I have a couple things to hang on the wall um, that also support the functionality and not necessarily from an aesthetic standpoint, but I'm really happy with it. And I hope that you find something that's helpful for you. Let's just jump into it. I'm gonna take you on a walkthrough and then I'll catch you on the other side. All right, bye. Okay, here we go. Here is a walkthrough of my new sewing room. It's not super fancy, but it's very functional and works very well for me. All right, so here we are walking through the door. I'll just start at the right. And you can see, of course, there's always a junk corner, right? So that's just a pile of fabrics that I'm gonna de-stash. I haven't figured out how I'm gonna de-stash it yet. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'm getting rid of those. They don't suit me. On the back of the door, I have my iron and ironing board. I'm trying to go slow so I don't make anybody sick. I got my big TV that I watch YouTube on while I am sewing. I have two things that I still need to hang up on the wall. This being one of them, it's my bulletin board. And that's where I'm gonna post my Make 9 grid so that it's always front and center for me as well as other like um mood board kind of things and then i've got this tv stand let me see if i can show you here i've got the tv stand where i've got all my scrap fabrics rolled up so that i can see them super easy and this has been really helpful i've actually already used some of the scrap fabric because it was so identifiable and then i've got my leather pieces here that i bought on my socation last year um, as well as my tracing paper which is the other thing that i need to hang um, once i get the tracing paper hung and the bulletin board hung this room will be complete all right so that is the TV stand. Then I've got one basket here of my rolled up PDF patterns and another basket here. So what I typically do with my PDF patterns, I keep them rolled up and then I write on the top what the pattern is so that it's easy for me to find when I'm ready. Um, and then I rough cut them when I'm ready to sew them and I fold them up and put them in an envelope. And I'll show you that in a minute. But then I've got this walk-in closet, which is so fabulous. So I've got my yarn, since I'm not knitting as much as I'm sewing. So in my old place, you might remember that I had my yarn and my uh, fabric all in the same area against a wall and I decided to put my yarn in here so that the room wasn't super cluttered and I've got all my knitting accessories here on top of the cubbies and then here's where I keep all my ice dye supplies they're not all in here right now because I am in the middle of ice dyeing something then I've just got various got my Cricut up there I'm not going to keep that out because I'm not going to use it that much this year. Uh, my sewing machine carrier, my serger box. And then this is all the stuff that um, they're all me made and they're all things except for this batch here 
is stuff that I made when I was in college and it's just sentimental stuff that I'm never gonna get rid of, but it also doesn't fit. So <laughs> it doesn't need to go in my main closet. And then the rest of this is all stuff that I've made that I actually love, but it doesn't quite fit right. So those are the things that I'm gonna be working on once a month, I'm gonna pick one item and I'm gonna um, tweak it until it fits. And then down here is just a sewing cart that I had. I'm missing some drawers. I think they're in a box that I haven't unpacked yet. And then this is a steamer that I thought I would use all the time and I actually never use it. Okay, and then, um, and then that bar up there is where I'm gonna hang the things that I'm currently working on. So you can see my Fen shirt right there and I'm actually finished with it. So I just need to post a review on it. And in this corner, I have a little ottoman. It's got storage. Um, I think I have some weights, free weights and stuff in there. <clears throat> and then here's my sewing table. And you can see I set it up so that I can see outside while I'm sewing. Um, and I've just got my serger and my machine. I've got a basket down there that's got, um, well, it's got my Moji pants in there that I thought were not gonna work, but I've gotten several suggestions on adding a back yoke to bring that back waistband up. So it's now a UFO again. <laughs> and the other stuff that's in there are some things that I um, decluttered from my closet but that I think I can save by dyeing. So there's some sweatpants in there and um, some other items in there that I think I can repurpose. And then on my sewing table, I also have my glasses that I need when I'm threading my machine, a pin magnetic pin holder, my seam ripper. I've got this uh, wooden thing back here that holds all of my rulers, which comes in really handy to have right there. Um, I keep my planner in my sewing notebook here to jot down ideas and know what it is that I need to work on coming up. I've got my fabulous pin dish that Jen from Today and Jen's Sewing Room made for me. She's got a big magnet on the bottom. How fabulous is that? I use it all the time. Then uh, I have my trash can here, which has been, I know it's like silly, but it's been a game changer. So having it to my left of my sewing machine, I have a lot less random threads thrown on my floor <laughs> that, I, that I need to vacuum up because my sewing, my uh, trash can is right there. Then I've got, I leave my MacBook here. Um, I use that to um, respond to the YouTube videos that I'm watching on TV. I also use it, that's where I usually have my instructions for whatever pattern I'm working on. And then I've got my cutting slash working table. Um, and I have a pattern out right now that I'll be doing a twall. There's some ice dyed fabric that I'm gonna be using for a twall. Um, I had actually, that was the fabric that was the prize for the So Purple to End ALZ challenge back in October. And it never made it to the recipient. It actually got returned to me. Um, I was hoping it would get sent to her, um, but because it was taking so long, I ended up dyeing another piece of fabric and sending that to her, and she's actually already made a really fabulous jacket out of it. Um, but this one came back to me, so I figured I would just use it um, for something for myself. Um, one quick comment about the chair. So I bought the chair because it was cute and I thought it looked pretty in my sewing room. It is not comfortable at all, so I don't suggest that. I am actually on the lookout for um, a true like ergonomic office chair that I think will work better for me in here. Um, I've heard from Jen from Today and Jen's Sewing Room that she has recently purchased a bungee chair from Ikea. Um, and I think she learned about it from Whitney at Tomcat Stitchery. So I think I wanna go and try one of those out and see if I'd like that. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely looking for something that's more ergonomic and it doesn't matter if it's cute or not. And then I've got this drawer um, organizer that I got, I believe I got this off Wayfair.com. It's very similar to the drawers that you see from Ikea. So I've got my pressing mats here. The, this one is a wool pressing mat. Um, these both came with my Cricut. Um, 
and so I use them for that. Then this drawer has like the things that I use all the time. So I've got pens, I've got my um, Simflex here. These are the things that I use to close up my thread on the bobbin um, once it's pulled out of its packaging. These are, you know, my seam ripper and my pattern markers and things like that. I've got this magnetic wrist thing. This, as a wrist thing, I don't wear it that way. I found that that didn't work for me, but this is where I keep all my like needles so that I know where they're at. And then I've got a bunch of labels. So these are some labels that my brother designed for me back in the um, late 80s when I was still sewing the first time around. Um, and I thought they were really cool and I've kept them forever. I've got some Alzheimer's awareness labels that Lynn um, had made during that challenge. Then I've got a bunch of labels um, that are just personalized labels and I forget to use them. <laughs> I've got, you know, my name on some. I've got Michelle Sews again on some. I just need to remember to use them. And then I just ordered 50 labels for the Dress a Girl project. So um, I'm gonna be making a dress a month, so I'm gonna have a lot of extras. So if anybody needs a, a label or two, let me know and I'll send you some. This is where all my needles are. Pins, you know, just typical stuff. Here's my serger threads, my elastics, my bobbin threads. Here's where I keep all my uh, scissors and my tracing papers. This is just some more various stuff. This is just like uh, wonder tape and heat bond stuff. And um, these are these are clips that I don't use because I just can't get the hang of it. These are all my manuals, some self-covering buttons, some snap a snap kit. I think my um, my presser foot kit is in here. And then that's just some various like knitting supplies. So like a pom-pom maker, a tassel maker. There's a grommet tool kit in there, some pom-poms and things like that. <clears throat> Underneath the table is just this big quilt that I thrifted from Goodwill. It doesn't fit in with my fabric stuff, so I just folded it up and put it under the table until I'm ready to use it. I think that I'm going to use that to make a Molly jacket, but I'm not 100% sure. So above my cutting table is where I'm going to put the tracing paper so that it's put on, I have it on a curtain rod and I'll be, and I'll be putting two hooks for the curtain rod to hang off of. And I'll probably put the bulletin board to the left of it over there. And then to the left, I've got this little cart that holds my sewing books, my notebooks, and then all my thread. And then this is a gift that I got from the fabulous Dochi. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, but um, she and I are friends on YouTube and Instagram. And she sent me, I already had this pattern, but I had bought the wrong size. So she has it and said that it wasn't her style. So she sent it to me graciously. And this one is my size and I love this pattern and I'm definitely gonna be making it again. I made it once when I very first started sewing and of course it didn't fit because I had bought the wrong size. And then she also surprised me with all this fabulous yarn. I can't wait to put this in with all my stash and then figure out how I'm gonna use it because it's all super fun colors and textures and things like that. I was so grateful that she sent that to me. <clears throat> and then over here, I've kind of already talked through my fabric stash because I did a video on how I organize it um, and catalog it and so I'm not going to go too much into detail here, but basically I've got one, two, three, well, two and a half of the columns are wovens. And then I start my knits at the very bottom. And then the last column are all knits. These three boxes here are all of my patterns. Um, the majority of them are 
ND, and I've got them separated by alphabetically. Um, so A through I, J through R, and S through Z. And give me a second and I'll show you how I organize them. Okay, so you can see here that they are in alphabetical order. And as you probably know, see that's my original Blair shirt. I just need to put the new one in there. As you probably know, indie patterns all almost always have names. So it's easy for me to just put them alphabetically. I don't organize them by brand or by garment type because that's all organized in Trello for me. So when I'm trying to figure out what I wanna sew, I go to Trello first. And then I come here, let me find one. And, and I find my the pattern that I want. So you can see I've got these fabulous um, envelopes that I got from a UK company. Can't off the top of my head think what it's called. I'll insert it at the bottom. But this is, so this one is the Caladium Jumpsuit by Katamiya. Um, I haven't been, but I want to start putting like a picture of my finished item when I've made it. And if I haven't made it yet, then it would be the line drawings or the marketing image of the pattern. Here's where I put my notes. So I traced this one and I didn't put any notes on um, any tweaks that need to be made, but this is where I would put those notes. Um, and then because of the way that I'm storing them, I've re-put the name on the side so that it is easy for me to see when I'm flipping through the envelopes. So up at the top there is just some fabric that I am um, getting rid of. It doesn't suit me, but these fabrics already promised to people, so I just need to hand them off. Then I've got a little basket with my big four patterns in it. Um, I have very few of those, so they fit in there, plus there's plenty of extra room. Then just a mason jar full of buttons. They're all really mostly inexpensive buttons that I've bought from Joann's, um, just so that I have some on hand. And then here is a um, just a coat hook that I've put on the wall to put all of my tape measures on. So I have a bunch of them somehow. I think we all end up gathering them through the years. And then I've also got the um, guitar strap on there that I'm gonna be using for my color block crossbody bag once I make that. Got a yardstick. And then here is my beautiful floor uh, mirror that I love so much. Um, I bought it on Amazon. I will put a link to it in the description box. But I love this mirror. Um, I'm not going to look in it right now because I'm in my jammies and my hair is a little messy. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, and I also just hang my fabulous abacus shawl that I made last year. Um, since I don't have an opportunity to wear it too often here, I want to be able to see it. Um, and that's it. That is my sewing room. And let me give you one last glance. And there we go. And so I've done the walkthrough and as you can see, it's, you know, I've got everything that I need, but it's not super over the top um, design. Um, it's just really functional. And I'm very lucky to have all this extra space that walk-in closet is a game changer for keeping this room uncluttered. And I think it's gonna work out really well for the next year. So, um, if there was anything in here that you have questions about that I didn't answer, then let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to answer. I will link a few things in the comments, like um, a link to my sewing machine, I'll link to the tables that I use, to the um, drawer system that I got from Wayfair. I didn't mention it in the video, but all these cubbies come from Target. Um, and I don't know if you watched Sherry from Granny's Sewing Room, but she recently went to Walmart and got some cubicles and hers were like $42. These were closer to 70. So hers was a nine cube system. This is eight, because I have two of them here. 
Um, this is an eight, and I want to say that it, this was closer to 70, if I recall. Um, it's been a couple of years since I bought them, but if you can get the Walmart deal, then jump on that. Um, let's see. These things that I have my patterns in came from Amazon. I'll link those. My big uh, mirror came from Amazon. I will link that. The baskets that I have my PDF patterns in. One of them came from Amazon. The other one, I can't remember. I might have actually picked that one up at Michael's. It's been a few years, so I don't have a link for that one. That's all I can think of right now. If you saw anything as I was walking through the room that you're curious about where I got it from, um, if I remember, then I will, I will give you an answer in the comments. Wherever you are, I hope the weather's amazing. I hope you're able to get some sewing in. If you liked this sewing room organization video, then maybe you'll like my last one. I'll link it here. Bye.